Hello everyone, it's Isabella here and welcome back to the channel. So today's video, you guys, okay, this is one I've been wanting to do. I actually made a plan on making a deep dive on Beauty Counter and finally it is here. So what inspired me to make a deep dive is the fact that simply we have some new situations happening with MLMs are infiltrating the bases where we can avoid MLMs, right? Like regular retail stores. And with that, if you guys haven't seen, Beauty Counter finally has entered Ulta. So with that sparked a conversation and also made me really think about like, you know what? This is the perfect time where people are talking about Beauty Counter. Let's do a deep dive. So that way, if people are looking it up, they can figure out if they should be a part of Beauty Counter or not, because I would like to show you guys the information behind the products that have just entered Ulta. So before you hop into today's video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel and click the bell button down below. My vlog channel merch and podcast is in the description below. And now let's get into it. If you guys don't know when it comes to my deep dives, I have it very particularly organized. So if you are someone who's new here or needs to find a specific spot that I talk about, everything is gonna be in the timestamp. It'll pop up in the video or in the comment section. I will just have something there so that way you guys can see according to what timestamp, what part you wanna jump through. So we're gonna talk about the products, the history of the company, issues with the CEO, how to get started, the actual loss, how much you can expect to make and so much more. So with that, let's dive into it with the history. Beauty Counter was founded by Greg Renfrew. Renfrew had previously worked with merchandise executives such as Martha Stewart and Susan Susie Hilfinger. Beauty Counter actually released nine products in 2013. And now we are here today where it is a developing multi-level marketing company. It is a beauty and it's kind of like a more clean body care, self-care type of brand, which is honestly a very popular concept right now in today's world. But with that though, it is a multi-level marketing company. So for those of you who are new here, you're probably like, why does she not like multi-level marketing companies? Why should I care? Why are they that dangerous? Now for my regular viewers, you guys have heard me say this all the time. You can just skip through it onto the next timestamp, which will be popping up over here. But for people who have literally no idea, let's kind of go through real quickly, MLMs, the problems, and why you need to avoid them. So according to studies and statistics by the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, they have studies that essentially show that majority of people who join MLMs, multi-level marketing companies, make little to no money. If anything, they lose money. That is a very consistent pattern that we see across the board with all MLMs. And it is not debatable as the literal organization has multiple quotes throughout their website saying the MLMs are a major problem, major losses when it comes to people that join or most people that join make no money. And then continuing on, there are either other studies that show you that you have a higher percent chance of even gambling making more money, having a higher chance of making money from an actual direct, specific, no product based pyramid scheme. And those are just a couple numbers that I wanted to show you to kind of show you what we're looking at and arguing at compared to the rest of the world and other business opportunities, I would say. Now, again, I'm not trying to encourage you to join a no product based pyramid scheme. And I'm not trying to say go gamble money to see if you can win something. Absolutely not. What I'm saying is this is a very toxic system. And there's a lot of data backing this up, showing that this can make you lose a lot of money. So the fact that this multi-level marketing system is very often marketed off to many people who need to side hustle, want extra income, et cetera, it's false advertising and could be really dangerous for a lot of people because they're losing their hard earned money to an unethical system and scam. What is a scam? This is the definition of a scam. My opinion from what I've seen and talked about with multi-level marketing companies is most companies where you're not getting what you're promised or told that you can get, that's a scam. So for example, joining an MLM when the CEO themselves, when the company is saying you can make extra money, you can retire from your nine to five, et cetera, that is false. That is not true. And that is a scam in my opinion. And then continuing on, because this is another conversation I want to have is pyramid schemes. Now, I also have talked about companies that I personally believe are pyramid schemes. We're going to dive through all of that here later on so you guys can see what my personal thoughts are about beauty counter. But let's talk about some myths about pyramid schemes. The FTC talks about pyramid schemes and how there are different versions of pyramid schemes, essentially. Now, one of the biggest rebuttals of multi-level marketing promoters, CEOs, et cetera, is, well, we can't be a pyramid scheme. Why? Because, well, we have a product. That's not inherently the case for all pyramid schemes. Now, how they can be a pyramid scheme is essentially where majority of the revenue and income that is being brought in is because of recruitment and not due to the fact that they have external retail sales. If majority of their income is because of recruitment and hardly any of their income is from actual external legit retail sales, then that is a huge red flag. So that is just some information I want to get out of the way. These are again, very important things because I want you guys to see the data because not a lot of MLMers or MLM companies will be outright and honest and show you this data. Now let's get into the actual problems with the CEO. So I know I did a little brief talk about beauty counter, who they are, etc. Now let's talk about the CEO issues. This is very, very alarming. I'm going to be reading off an article. This article is 
quite disturbing to say the least. So this is from the truthinadvertising.org, the ugly truth about beauty counters. They do have a conversation about beauty counter as a company, but they really do dive into the opportunity and what is marketed off by the CEO or the company. So this is the part of the section that are talking about income when it comes to the multi-level marketing company. And the way that the CEO carries themselves, I think is very, very important when it comes to these companies. So you can really see the ethics behind the company. So right here, this is a direct quote from the article that says, in a response to a FAQ on its website that asks, how much can I expect to earn as a consultant? Beauty Counter gives a non-answer that links to its confusing income disclosure statement, which we will get into in a minute. In general, consultants who dedicate the most time and effort to Beauty Counter earn the most in financial rewards. To see more information showing the earnings of all Beauty Counter consultants, please refer to the income disclosure statements. Now, again, that is completely ignoring facts. And the FTC clearly states there are people that work all the time and can work very consistently at these companies, but make nothing. So again, very big red flag and misinformation about the entire company. Despite these economic realities, the company and its distributors are all about putting a radiant glow on Beauty Counter's business opportunity. In fact, Renfrew, the founder and CEO, claims that the company's business opportunity is, and I quote, generous. Here are how she spins it to a group of Spanish speaking individuals. She says, we help people make profit and earn much needed income or just additional income that makes their life a little bit easier. There's nothing to apologize about having to earn an income. We all need to make money. And now, right now more than ever, people are hurting across the board. And you all have an opportunity to serve your community by offering them, even in COVID-19, a business opportunity that affords people to replace much needed income at a time where so many people are losing their jobs and being furloughed. So right here is something that is very disgusting to me because if anything, there should be proper disclaimers. Now, MLMs aside, the ethics are horrible, but at the bare minimum, I would expect a CEO to have proper transparency, proper disclaimers and such. And it looks like the CEO truly, in my opinion, does not give a because they will clearly share information and make tons and tons of false income claims. This is not true. The FTC clearly states it. And what's even gross to me is the fact that she is pushing this illusion that you can make money, that you could replace income. And actually, in fact, there are many different companies that actually were flagged during COVID-19 because of the, the misrepresentation about income. So right here from the get-go coming from her voice, her words talking about this, this is disgusting. On another video conference call recorded on May 14th, Renfrew tells a group of bilingual women that this is the best moment to join Beauty Counter and encourages them to target college students who have lost their jobs before saying, you all are perfectly capable of living in the United States of America, where everything's in English and somehow you get through your days. Every single day, driving your cars, going to the grocery store, feeding your families, putting them through school. So it's the same with our business. Don't use that as an impediment to be successful with us. We are working hard to support you in Spanish. We do have a lot of things that are in Spanish today, but don't let that be an excuse. Let that be your opportunity to serve your community. The beauty counter CEO then tells these women that they have a responsibility to pitch the business opportunity to their communities to help families that need money to pay the mortgage or school fees or need a significant income, downplaying their experiences, and then furthermore, telling them that they have a responsibility to spread this to their friends, families, and tell their friends and families and telling everyone about this absolute scam, in my opinion, is disgusting. So from the get-go, as we can see, in my opinion, this is gross. This is wrong and this is inappropriate. This is just a taste of the issues that I have with the CEO in general. Not only did this person pick out this type of business structure, which was highly unnecessary, and in my opinion, gives her more profit and a lot of people are struggling at the very bottom, but additionally, this was not necessary because this is harming people in my opinion. It shows the ethics and the moral compass of the CEO in my opinion. Now let's talk about the products. So I like to go over the products real quickly because I think it's important to discuss if they are are just good, for example, if they're marketable, if there's something that I would honestly picture when it comes to just selling at a regular store and if they would be something that people might be interested in. Going through the website right now, they have multiple different products. Again, they're all about makeup, bath and body, skincare, and they have many different products. So honestly, I think the packaging looks great. I do think that they have something that people would be interested in. I'm gonna be honest, if this, if I had no idea that this was an MLM and this was in a regular store I shop at, like Ulta, for example, I would have no idea. And I would be so much more willing to try a product like this. Now, there are really good reviews on a lot of the products. So from an I am reading and seeing, it looks like there are pretty damn good products, which is kind of surprising in my opinion, because usually I find very cheap and sh products by MLMs, but again, they may have an exception. All I'm gonna say is I think the price is pretty damn 
you know, it's it's up there. They can be good. There's people that do like them. I think my personal question is, are the reviews actual from retail sales or are the reviews from people who are inside of the company that have more of an incentive to hype up the company and, you know, make it to where the products look really good when they're not that good. You know what I mean? So, so far, that's kind of what they're selling to you. And, you know, that's not bad. However, a lot of people that are looking into this company, they're wanting to know how to join the business opportunity, how to get started, how much it's going to cost. And there's a lot of information out there, especially across the entire website. So we're going through it all now. So let's talk about how to get started with the MLM. So going through on a screen recording right here that I did for like a little bit of a test to join, quote unquote, there is a $50 starter pack that's kind of a digital starter pack for you to purchase. That is, again, just kind of the basics that they want to go over. And I think it's kind of like your little admission because most MLMs aren't free. And then after that, you go into the starter pack. So the original $50 kit does not include products, but moving in, that's when you start purchasing the products. And having something so that you can quote unquote start your business. So the upfront cost can really vary. You can absolutely do just the $50. However, it's very unrealistic because you need to have products in order to sell them. You know what I mean? I would assume that someone may or may not come out around nearly $200, I think at the lowest, in order to get started, which is a pretty hefty penny for a lot of people. That is a lot of money for someone to invest upfront in hopes that they can start off their business. So then they get their starter kit, they get their product pack, Pack, and they're able to kind of kick everything off by selling the products online, trying to recruit other people in, etc. And since let's say you have joined Beauty Counter, let's say you purchased your starter kit and everything, now what? Now, what should you even be expecting? The sad reality about this is, is not many people realize the true data and information about it when it comes to how much money you can make. And if anything, how do you actually make the real money? Let's get into the income disclosure statement. So if you guys don't know, an income disclosure statement is a disclosure that can show you hey, here's how many people are in our company. Here's how much that they are making according to rank. This is how long. Just pretty much what to expect when it comes to the company. So that's what we're going to dive into. So Beauty Counter has a 2021 U.S. Commissions Overview, and it talks about what you need to know about becoming a Beauty Counter brand advocate. One by one, we are leading a movement to a future where all beauty is clean beauty. We are powered by people, and our collective mission is to get safer products into the hands of everyone. Formulate, advocate, and educate. That's our motto. So as of December, end of December 2021, Beauty Counter had over 45,224 independent brand advocates in the U.S. and in Canada. So additionally, I would like to say as I'm reading this off, we are going to talk about this further when we get into the compensation plan, the aka how do you get paid in what ways. You do have a 25 to 35 percent commission rate, which is not too bad. But again, we could do better. Typical full year earning for 2021. The figures shown on this page include all individuals who are eligible to earn commission with Beauty Counter as brand advocates at any time through 2021. A total of 73,719 U.S. brand advocates were analyzed and summarized, including brand advocates who had no sales and therefore earned no income, individuals who did not maintain their brand advocate affiliations through the year, they did not meet the activity requirements, which means they didn't stay active in the company, therefore lost it, and those who enrolled later in the year and had as few as one month of earnings. So these figures do not include values of trips, non-cash incentives, prices, and free products provided to brand advocates. So there's a lot going on on this page, right? Looking at this can be probably pretty intimidating for some people starting because they're like, oh my God, this is a lot and I'm confused, okay? It's in my opinion, in my opinion, I think that these types of sheets, data, et cetera, not just exclusively to MLMs, but many types of sheets and data are not meant for people to easily understand. And in my opinion, the harder it is, the less that people are gonna be interested in looking into it and they might just have blind trust in a company when you definitely shouldn't. So another thing I wanna talk about is there are different types of data that are shown on this chart. So there's average and median. So what I would like to get out of the way is I do not personally, in my opinion, think that showing the average numbers of income every year is accurate. The reason being there's hundred people that could have hundred dollars in a year that they made. And then there's one person that made 60,000. That average number is going to be way, 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 way higher than for example, if we did median, where if we looked at how many people were making money and then we found the median number, we could say, okay, this is probably what I'm going to be expecting. And if the one person that made 60K in the 100 people that made $100, we would be able to see that the median would be $100, which would probably be, in my opinion, the more accurate description of what you would expect. So they actually have average numbers and they have median numbers. So I am gonna cover the median and I'm gonna cover the average, but that's my perspective that I wanted to share real quickly. For the full year 2021, earnings for US brand advocates before expenses were, the average total annual income for all brand advocates was 1,861. That is not including taxes, fees, you name it. 27% 
30% of brand advocates had no sales and therefore earning no commission. 35% of brand advocates earn more than $500. 22% of brand advocates earn more than 1,000 in the year. 1% made more than 30,000. And then now let's go into the um, next fact section, which is typical earnings of newly enrolled brand advocates in 2021. So right here, it talks about for these figures, we included all 17,169 brand advocates that are both new enrollees in 2021 commission year and had at least six months within the year as brand advocates. So they are actually doing data, which is quite fascinating on people who have been in the company for a while. I think this is a wonderful example to show how much work people can put in and how much income they probably did make. The median total first six month income for new brand ambassadors was $53. 36% of new brand ambassadors had no sales and therefore no commission. 41% of new brand ambassadors earned more than $100. Really quickly, I would like to reiterate 36% of people who were in the company for six months made nothing. Oh my God, 41% of new brand ambassadors earn more than $100. That's still not enough for six months, and that's not enough to cover the investment to even get started in the company. 13% of new brand ambassadors earn more than $500, which again, oh my God, that's not a lot. And 6% of new brand ambassadors earn more than $1,000. First six month income, that is insane. Now, additionally, they do have a section where they talk about expenses that are pulled by brand advocates. So typical expenses. So it does say that people that did join probably spent $50 in order to join because there's no other way to. But then they say at least 50% or 55% of participants purchase a starter kit. On average, that would spend approximately around $273.50. The median amount spent was $200. What? Okay, I didn't even see that. See? Damn, my numbers are good today. The median amount spent spent was 201. To remain a brand advocate, it's necessary to pay $50 annually, which provides access to our behind the counter brand advocate portal. With all of that being said, looking at the income disclosure statement, looking at how small the median numbers were, again, I'm going to focus on the median numbers, how hardly anyone made anything. Majority of people actually made nothing, which is insane to me. And a lot of people had to drop what, around 200, maybe 250 or so to get started. Oh my God. So that's what you're you're supposed to be expecting, by the way. Now let's actually go into the compensation plan. So here is the next part that I would like to talk about is where do you make this money? How do you make this money? Percentages, recruiting, not recruiting, sales, etc. Okay, because this is really important to know where is your money actually coming from and what you could be expecting. So the compensation plan apparently is hidden, which is a little bit difficult. However, I did find one. Now, real quickly, I am running off of this because this is the only one I could find. Again, I am not trying to misinform anyone. If there are any other details or if anyone has the direct information for the beauty counter compensation plan, please let me know because I would love to see it. So let's get into the one that I did find though. I will have the direct link to the one that I found in the description below. So let's go over this one for the United States. First is selling to clients and members. Second is developing a team. And then third is developing other leaders. So quick things I want to point out is if majority of the ways of earning income is by recruiting people or getting someone into the system, girlfriend, that is a pyramid scheme. But anyways, let's keep going and see what it has to say. You range from 25 to 35% commissions. Now I would like to show you that right here, base retail commission rate is 25%. Personal volume that you have every single month, which should range from 750 to 1,490. That means you can get 30%. Now what I will say is Beauty Counter does show that the items you purchase for yourself does not count towards your personal volume. So you aren't allowed to buy a bunch of product and make that work for you, which is good. However, I would like to vocalize that I have heard through the grapevine that people have encouraged downlines allegedly to still purchase products themselves. Now, how you can do that is making a fake account for a customer and do something like that to where that is your account that you use to purchase products. Again, it's all alleged. I'm just saying from my personal experience, I have witnessed many people in MLMs purchase products in order to keep rank, stay active, etc. Now let's look at developing the team. So title qualifications. Your title is earned by accumulating qualifying volume, QV, new volume, NV, and business volume, BV. To advance past director, you should develop directors among those closest to you to form director branches. So right here, it actually does encourage you to have people on your team. And if we actually look at what from senior director all the way up to the very top rank, it looks like you are 100% required to have director branches. So right there from the get go to order in order to even remotely hit the top of the company where more of the money is, you would have to recruit. 
that's red flag. But let's look at the rest of the ranks. So right here, it says the total of all the QV from yourself and all the members of your downline team. But it does discuss how you can grow through most of the ranks. I think it looks like you can't grow through certain ranks once you hit executive director and managing director because you do need a downline then. There's requirements for people to be there. But it looks like you don't have strict requirements in order to grow through the company. So maybe up public in front, there's no clear definition that this is a pyramid scheme. However, if you look at a lot of the top leaders, and this is just my theory on this, but if you look at a lot of the top leaders and anyone else throughout the company who is trying to grow, most of them are trying to get a downline. And I have been able to see that that could be quite significant to your growth and success. So now let's actually look at level overwrite commissions. Another way of making money looks like you can get additional income if you have a downline. It, it honestly gives you more incentive to recruit, in my opinion, with the more opportunities they have, because look, consultants, a senior consultant and more, you get more money because you have a downline online, which again is a red flag. And then of course, right here, which is developing other leaders, you are able to again, get more money and make more money because of downlines. So in my opinion, yes, you can sell and grow through the ranks. However, from what I've personally seen when it comes to beauty counter, there's a lot of participants in the company who do try and recruit because of the way that in my opinion, the compensation plan is set up and that would incentivize people more to join. And not everyone wants to recruit people to get some of the quote unquote good money. But at the end of the day, even people who are recruiting or are doing everything they can, it doesn't even really change that because there's many people still who are in the middle ranks, the third rank, the fourth rank, and still hardly making anything. And that is a huge red flag in itself. So now we are finally hitting the part that truly sparked this conversation. Ulta is finally bringing in beauty counter. Now, real quickly, I wanna kind of talk about how MLMs have the concept of you are the marketer, right? You are the one selling the product. You have the opportunity to do this. We're not in retail stores because we want you to be the ones to make the money and sell the products. And we don't spend all the money on marketing because we're giving it to you instead. Yeah, about that. Well, the concept is for actual promoters to be selling the products. And usually we don't see MLMs in stores or we hardly do because the goal is to have people join the system. Now it's a really fascinating take how we have Beauty Counter who's in Sephora, but is also now in Ulta. That's a big red flag because now we're touching retail stores. So real quickly, I am gonna read off the post that was made by Beauty Counter about this. And we're gonna talk about the pros and cons and how this actually is hurting people and why this is an additional reason why I don't recommend Beauty Counter and why this can hurt you financially. Now we finally hit Beauty Counter now at Ulta. We are thrilled to announce that Beauty Counter is now available at Ulta Beauty. Beauty Counter exists to raise up beauty and joining forces with nation's largest beauty retailer is a significant step forward in achieving our purpose to get safer products into the hands of everyone. We're entering a new era with beauty that's beyond clean. We're talking safer, seriously effective, and more sustainably designed products now at Ulta. Shop a curated collection of clean beauty from clinically proven skincare to uncompromising makeup. Available online on February 26th and in stores March 5th. Join us as we raise a beauty together for everyone. I would love to have a conversation about how this is extremely damaging. So again, like I talked about before, the concept of MLMs, it's not actually really this way, but the concept of MLMs is being marketed off to you as you are the one that is selling the product. You are the one that is the salesperson or the owner, business owner, which, you know, you're not a business as owner of the beauty counter, but you know what I mean. And with that, this is honestly a very alarming situation because one, now we have another problem where the products are accessible in a far more convenient way. Now let's compare both. Ulta Beauty is probably one of my favorite places to go into when it comes to beauty products. I am there all the time. I am a frequent flyer into the Ulta Beauty area, okay? I love them. That's where I get all my makeup, skincare, self-care, you name it. I am there. That is where I go. Ulta Beauty also is known for having an incredible reward system. So for me, I get 1.25 points per dollar that I spend. And the more that I do spend, I can have a chance to get more points. So on top of that, they have really, really great discounts. They have an incredible reward system that truly pays off. They also have tons of different sales opportunities to save. For example, in the new year, I always buy some of my big products and major stock ups during the new year because they have the biggest sales. So if I'm spending $300 on a bunch of products, more than likely I spend at least 25 to 50% off. So that total drops significantly due to Ulta's pricing and how they arrange their sales. Ulta has, again, yearly sales, quarterly sales, monthly sales, so much going on. It allows people to have an opportunity to purchase beauty at a really affordable and accessible price, which is awesome. And additionally, on top of that, Ulta is a really wonderful opportunity for people to try new products. So for example, if you do or don't know, Ulta is all about making sure everyone loves the products that they purchase. So if you try a product and you do not like it, you can return it. You can absolutely return it, even if you've tested it out. Suck 
such a significant beauty brand in the entire world and why many brands want to have their products in Ulta. Now Ulta's membership is again, you don't need a credit card. You just sign up with your name and that's it. They do have a credit card option as well, which I actually do have. Now let's look at the beauty counter side. So they do have their own type of membership. However, there it's, it's very similar to like many MLMs. Now, if you were to strictly purchase from Ulta and get your beauty counter products through there, you're probably gonna 90% of the time get a better deal, have coupons, have sales, and overall save in your beauty counter purchase. Now let's talk about beauty counter, just buying it from a regular promoter. A regular promoter, you're more than likely not gonna have a discounted rate. You're probably not gonna have as frequent as sales. You're probably not gonna have as convenience when it comes to shipping, or you're probably not gonna be able to physically try the products. And with that, they don't even have good membership rewards points compared to Ulta. So looking at it from my standpoint here and seeing how someone who wants to purchase beauty counter, more than likely someone is gonna walk into the nearby Ulta and do it instead of purchasing from a regular promoter. It's cheaper, it's more accessible, and if you don't like it, you can immediately turn away. And guess what? You're not getting recruited into an MLM or having someone push to recruit you into an MLM. Now, how is this harmful? People that join this, they want to sell a product and now it's initiating more competition here because if you wanna be someone who sells the product, you're probably not gonna be able to do it when most people have access to an Ulta. And additionally, having access to Ulta is actually far easier because if you guys don't know, there are many targets that are having deals with Ulta, meaning Ultas are becoming or being put into targets. Not only are there Ulta stores all over, but there's targets with Ultas in them too. So everyone is gonna have far more access to Ulta. And additionally, I actually remember doing a research paper on Ulta back in college and some of their business planning that I was able to read into was they wanted to continuously expand their stores and have, again, their stores more accessible due to the fact they have such high demand. So this is a major problem for people who are promoters in the beauty counter world. They are not gonna be able to make that type of money or commissions at all. And it's really putting them at a disadvantage. Now, another point I wanna make that's really alarming is when I talk about MLMs, I also see how I've seen many different ways that people try and recruit someone into the multi-level marketing system. And with that, face-to-face recruitment is a thing. So for example, I have seen people who go into Target, Walmart, and try and walk around and find people to recruit or have a conversation with in order to get them into the MLM. Here is my big alarming red flag with this. We now have a dedicated space in Ulta Beauty that is dedicated to a multi-level marketing company. If I were someone in an MLM, I would try and camp out in Ulta and see who checks out Beauty Counter and position myself to where I could recommend the products and if anything, make a friend and have them join my company, which is a really, really big red flag because now there's more opportunities for people to recruit you into a system that will financially fail you. And that's really dangerous to say the least. This is another really big problem because we have it to where people are going to be purchasing from MLMs and you know multi-level marketing company products and they are essentially giving money to a really messed up and unethical system. Now, again, that's not to say that all co- products and companies in Ulta are good and great. Trust me, there's some that I personally avoid because I don't like them. All I'm saying though is, is now we have additional money that is being put into these MLMs that help them stay around longer, that can help them spread misinformation to other people and can allow them to falsely advertise to you that you can make extra income and put more money into the pockets of the CEO herself, who apparently has no problem allegedly spreading misinformation. It's a really sad and upsetting story, but through the income disclosure statement, through the behaviors of the CEO, through the products that are now accessible to everyone, through actual stores, through online and in physical stores, which makes it easier for other people, it sounds like the need for promoters for beauty counter are going to go away. And it's not gonna benefit you as they are claiming. And for many of you who are coming on here, you might be really disappointed because you know, you were expecting a good opportunity. And I'm so sorry if you were disappointed, but please know you deserve better than an MLM. Everyone deserves better than an MLM. Don't hop to another one. Don't go and try another one. They're all very, very similar. And this is just another one in my list at this point that is absolutely terrible and not truly valuing their promoters. So that was it for my deep dive in today's video about Beauty Counter. I hope you're able to learn something or if anything, know to avoid this brand in Ulta. So thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And now without further ado, I will see my angels in the next video. Bye.